So guys, uh, today I was doing a Q and A on my Instagram about breaking plateaus. And I got a cool question about deadlifting. The guy had trouble hitting 545 on the deadlift. He kept missing off the floor, even though he could hit 515 for a few reps in, in one set. And so a lot of times with the deadlift in particular, I try to avoid pulling reps at high percentages for this reason. You get a lot out of the stretch reflex and uh, so what you can pull for a double or a triple isn't necessarily indicative of what you can pull for a single. So I wrote him a progression uh, that I think in eight weeks could get him pulling, you know, 545 plus that involved backing off, training a lot of singles in the 80 to 100% uh, one rep max range and then testing a new one rep max. So I got a question on that about how I chose those numbers. And to some degree, I base them off percentage of one rep max, which I think, you know, is the is the straightforward way to plan a progression if you're doing it top down, right? You're starting out with, okay, here's where I want to end up, here's where I am now, and then just, you know, kind of work backwards to figure out the, the plan that you're going to write for the next four, six, eight, however many weeks. However, I think that once you get to a certain level, there's a lot of benefit in accounting for other factors besides one rep max. And so I'm going to talk about a few of those in this video. The first one honestly might be the most complicated, but it's one that I think is most important. And that's what I call a decelerating progression. So this is a principle you can apply to your programming, to your warmups, and honestly to probably a lot of stuff in life as well. But the idea is that the closer you get to your goal, the slower you want to progress. And I think that should be intuitive because the closer you get to something that you're shooting for, it's usually some shooting for something really hard it gets harder and harder as you go, right? You start out, first steps are easy, second steps are a little harder and harder and harder and harder. So you, you slow down, you don't try and maintain that rate of progress over time. But a lot of people don't think that way. A lot of people will just plan for straight linear progression throughout their entire training program or even their entire training session. So I'm gonna give you guys a few examples of how this works. And the, the easiest way for me is to think in terms of warmups. So, when I'm warming up, I'll warm up, you know, just by feel, usually in plate jumps to roughly 70 to 80% of what I'm going to do on a given day. So we're going to use number 600 because I can do math in my head with 600. And we're going to say I warm up to 455, just going plate, 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 whatever, to 455 for my 600 pound working set. Once I get to 70 to 80%, I try to then plan out my warm ups, knowing that each jump is going to be smaller than the previous jump. So let's say I went from 365 to 405, to 455 rather, which is a 90 pound jump. My next jump needs to be less than 90 pounds. So let's say I make it 70 pounds, right? So we would add that to the 455, and I honestly can't do that great in my head, but um, I think it comes out to like, let's say 530. The next jump, I did that, I definitely did the wrong. The next jump needs to be smaller than 70 pounds, right? So let's say it's 40 pounds, that would take us to 570, and the final jump is 30 pounds, right? So each warm up after 70% was smaller than the previous one. The reason for that is twofold. One, in terms of physical capabilities, we've already explained how the closer you get to 600, the harder each lift is, right? It's a lot harder to go from 360, to go from uh, 455 to 545 than it is to go from 365 to 455. That's pretty obvious. The other one I think involves your mindset. The closer you get to that goal, um, the more kind of anxious you get. And I think you guys are probably familiar with this as well. You walk into the gym on a heavy day, you're fucking amped up, you're ready to go. You start warming up, you're in the groove. Maybe you're getting more amped up, but if you're not, you know, you're anything less than 100%, maybe you start to overthink things. Maybe you start to get a little anxious. Maybe you start to, you know, second guess what you're going to do for that day. Warming up in this very slow and progressive manner, decelerating your progression, uh, helps to avoid those situations. I think it's very useful. You can do the same thing when you're planning a program, right? So let's say you're peaking for a meet. Well, the progressions that you're going to make in the first, let's say, six weeks of your meat prep cycle, you could be jumping five or 10% of your one rep max each week. But in the last two or three weeks, maybe you're only going up by two and a half percent, maybe even less than that. Maybe you're not progressing at all. Maybe you're just taking the same weight over and over so you get more comfortable with it headed in the meat. That's not something I would often recommend, but if you do have issues with the things I just described, it's something that I think you should consider. So decelerating progression is one thing besides the one rep max that you should consider when you are choosing attempts. 
The next thing I think a lot of people overlook is technical proficiency. So this is a big deal and it's something I've talked about before. Uh, one of the big indicators of success, success in powerlifting is the ability to grind through a rep, right? It's a really hard, slow rep, but you don't break, your technique doesn't break down. You stick with the lift and you, you continue pulling or pushing or whatever the hell you're doing until you complete it. Well, some people are naturally good at that, but many aren't. And it is a skill that you can learn. The way you learn it is by working at the percentages right below the point where your form breaks down and doing multiple sets of low reps at that percentage point, right? Now, here's where technical proficiency comes in. The more you're able to maintain your technique at higher percentages, the lower the percentage that you can generally work at is, right? So let's take my deadlift. I'm a very good deadlifter um, just because I have a natural build for deadlifting. So my max effort pull is going to look very, very similar to a 70% pull, which means I can get a lot of value out of training in the 70 to 80% range. I'm not going to beat my body up as much. I can train with higher reps, right? And I know that because I've mastered that technique so well, when it does come time to pull one at max, I'm going to be able to do that without a ton of practice in the 95 to 100% rep range. If you are a beginner, you need more work in kind of the middle range, right? You probably need more work in, in my experience, it's usually the 75 to 85% range. The reason for that is your, it sounds shitty, but you're too weak to benefit from less than 75%, right? If your one rep max is 200, training with 100 pounds or even, you know, 120 pounds, that's not going to do much for you. You need to be pushing the weights up. But if you're training past roughly 85%, you're not going to be able to maintain good technique and you're going to develop bad habits. Right? So that's why you kind of want that middle range, that 75 to 85% range. That should be the majority of your work if you're a beginner. And then if you're an intermediate, you want more on the top end of the range. Right? So you want more in that 85 to 95% range. And that's because that's the stage where you're developing the ability to grind. This type of, this is part of my model of athletic development for powerlifting. I think it carries over to bodybuilding as well. And it's one of the things I discussed in the Unfuck Your Bodybuilding series, which I'm still working on. It's taking me a long time and I apologize. Um, but technical proficiency, another thing that I would evaluate, right? So um, when I was planning this guy's deadlift progression, right? If you're missing at 545 off the floor and you're able to pull 515 for reps, that shows me you definitely have some type of issue with te technical proficiency. Like you do, because otherwise you'd be able to hit that 545. So I tried to make it so that more of his training was in that 70 to 85% range rather than kind of on the top end. Uh, and then there are other things you can consider as well. One, uh, milestone lifts, right? So I'm sure you guys have all experienced that thing where you're going for your first three plate bench or your first 500 pound squat or whatever is a big number in your head, 300 kilo deadlift. It gets in your head and you overthink it and you psych yourself out. So that's something to consider. Either really creep up on those milestones, skip those milestones completely, right? If your goal is a 300 kilo deadlift, go straight from 295, train with 295 till you're ready for 305, right? Just skip 300 completely. Um, one thing I've seen is even people putting trash bags around the plate so they can't see what's on the bar so they don't psych themselves out. Um, but Try to incorporate, if you know you're going to be hitting a milestone lift in your progression, especially if it's a heavy lift for you, maybe work around that number a little bit. Maybe don't attack it head on. Um, and then there's a bunch of other things you consider as well. There's, you know, training age, physical age, you know, people who are more beat up, who have injuries, you know, they're going to try and stay out of those higher percentage ranges more. Not because those are more inherently risky, but because the absolute load is going to take more of a toll on the body than lower relative, lower more than relative loads would. Um, so to explain what that means, if I'm capable of lifting 500 pounds, uh, a set of 10 with 300, probably still pretty difficult for me, but not having 300 pounds on my back is going to be, not having 500 pounds on my back is probably gonna be better for me than having 500 pounds on my back if I have back issues, right? So I would develop more strength in the low end of the percent range. So there's a lot of different things that are important to consider when you are planning out uh, your progression, whether it be in the course of a training session, over the course of a mesocycle, even in life, right? Like if you're planning to take your driver's test, spend a lot more time studying the book, really gradually increase when you're driving, start out in the parking lot, then maybe go to a side street, but you can cram all the, the book knowledge in you need. 
it, it applies to a lot of different things. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I will leave a short summary in the description below, but if you have comments on any of this stuff or you have other things that you think people should consider uh, when they are planning their progressions, please uh, leave those in the comments uh, as well. And thank you for watching.